Hello. I filmed earlier, but the footage was really bad, so I have to do it after my shower now. That's why I'm wet and look like this. Misha, do you want to be in the video, baby? Come here. Just trying to run away. Be in the video. It's been a while. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in to another Rena K YouTube video. Today I am once again playing around with Glitz Glitter Gel, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to paint with it, right? Oh, sleepy boy. Yes, I'm gonna be painting with it, and it's gonna get a little messy, but it's gonna be really beautiful in the end, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Mishi, you have to be in the frame, baby honey. Okay, I know this looks a little weird, but this is just our biggest products that we're using today. I didn't want to bring all the tubs of glitz in, so this is what they look like dry. We're going to be using the black, purple, pink, and gold for the galaxy one, and then we're using the red, orange, and gold for our frame card. This is a four inch by five and a quarter piece of cardstock. I'm using the heavy base because we're painting with the glitter and it can warp it a little bit so you want to have as thick of paper as you possibly can. These are the two stamp sets that I'm using in today's um, project. I'm using this one on the galaxy one and then I'm using this one on the framed card. And then to get all the glitter on the card I'm going to be using these paint brushes. They're not special at all. I found them in a drawer that I all also have puppy chow in so you really don't need that fancy of a brush it will hinder the brushes performance but I'm just using these as my designated glitz brushes so it's fine we're gonna get started by showing you how to tape up the borders with purple tape okay so here is a normal scratch piece of white paper and at the bottom here I've made a tiny eighth of an inch line across here because I'm gonna be lining up the bottom of my cardstock with the scratch piece of paper just so you can see that it's really super in line and then we're gonna take purple tape I should have cut these pieces up but I didn't and I'm gonna cut it in half because you can use it and I like to cut in the middle in kind of a weird curvy way just because sometimes I lose track of which is the manufactured straight edge so I just like to really make sure that that's not straight. Next I'm going to put this purple tape on the mat to kind of pick up any, oh look, it picked up a ton of glitter, but just to pick up anything to reduce the stickiness because sometimes it can rip paper. And I'm just going to tape it along the line of the bottom of the page like that. And then I can flip and I'm going to do this on all the edges. hardest part becomes just pulling it off the paper. So now you have a perfectly bordered piece of paper to work with. And then you can just place that right on top of the scrap piece of paper that you were using. And we can begin painting. So I'm starting with this black glitz. So I'm just going to be painting this right on there. It's a chunkier kind of paint substance so it will take a little more than you think to get some full coverage, but that's okay. I've done this project like three or four times right now and I'm not even halfway. So I'm just going to paint around the outsides here. It's very fun to paint with, it's so gritty. And now I'm going to move to purple. And you can let it dry a little bit if you want, but I do not have time to do that. Also, you can blend a little bit better when you do this. So you can blend the glitters together and make it more smooth looking. I don't want to brag, but I'm in an astronomy 101 class in college right now, and I'm learning a lot about the universe and how many stars there actually are in the night sky, and this amount of glitter depicts the amount of stars very accurately, I think. So now, leaving that, let me see the shine, there it is. Only problem with this is that glitter does get everywhere when you paint with this, so you have to be careful. You have to be clean and orderly and ready for anything to happen. So now I'm going to move to the pink color and I'm just going to brush that along the center. You can add some texture in there if you want. I like to just drag my brush. Now I'm going to take my tinier paintbrush to add just a little line of gold in the center. <laughs> Alright, so 
that is what that looks like now and I know it kind of looks wet and a mess but I'm gonna take the tape off before the glitter glue dries because you can pull the glitter kind of apart if you don't do that and you just want to pull really slowly oddly satisfying where you at that is a big glob right there I need to spread that out it's making me nervous okay it's going well so far there we go and we have one more we can do this so far in a few of these I've messed up at last second and it's very frustrating this isn't the fastest technique in the world to create a border but it is effective when you're not rushing yes reveal yourself oh yes okay perfect that's beautiful all right now we're going to let this dry and by let this dry i mean i'm going to take a pre-made one that i already did and let dry so you can see how shiny that is and you can see how warped it gets this looks like me after my run yesterday but you know it's it, we can straighten it out we can put it on a piece of cardstock and it'll be fine me on the other hand there's no hope just want you to see the chaos that I'm living with right now. Like everything else in my life, just hide it from plain sight. Okay, so we are going to be using this stamp set called To the Moon and Back, and I thought this was a planet Earth at first, but <laughs> I looked at the, um, I didn't know that it was called the moon, I, I just didn't look at anything. I'm stupid, I know. I thought it was the planet Earth, and I was trying to figure out which countries were what, but yeah, I'm just going to stop talking now. So I'm going to be using the Skeleton Leaves Amalgam Ink for the background of the moon. I'm using this for the background instead of like a gray, because the moon is actually like a little creamier colored in the sky and when I first made a card with James he was very upset with the gray outcome because it did not reflect the true properties of the moon so I had to find a new option but luckily this amalgam ink just came out and it makes the perfect moon background for this we also found that when you use the detail part with sandy beach that it makes a nice subtle like moon design I literally don't know how I'm going to rid my life of glitter after this video. I need to take a break. I love glitz, but I've been using it in unorthodox ways, and it's I'm starting to feel the effects. Alright, so I'm just going to position that. And it might not look like the stamp is inking up, but it is. And it'll go on there, and you'll be able to see it. Just trust me. I am what we call a stamping professional. Beautiful. You see how nice and soft that is? So cute. So now we're going to die cut this using the dies provided in the stamp set, and then we can assemble our card. Okay, so now I have the moon die cut, and then I have the greeting. I decided with I'm over the moon for you, and I'm going to be using 3D foam squares to seal them down, and I'm also going to put this onto a card base. Now you can put another piece of paper underneath this to layer it if you want to make sure that it's really stiff and rigid and not kind of warped, because sometimes if you just put it on one layer, it doesn't totally fix it. My other cards that I posted were a little bent out of shape, I'm not going to lie, but you know what? It's exactly how my life was going at that time, so I felt like my artwork reflects my life. I'm just going to put a lot of tape very close to the edge, because I don't want the edges, like, fraying up or anything. Oh, just taped my desk mat. Awesome. That's going to be fun. See how glittery and starry that is? Gorgeous. And now, you can put the moon right there and the greeting right there there's not a lot of steps to these cards they're pretty easy and we'll use three if you ask me how many you should use on these i choose about three if you ask thermal web they recommend 767 I thought that was really bad placement ready boom card done beautiful super easy super glittery look at that yeah get a look at that look at that that's like a oh gorgeous okay so that was our first card painting with glitz and now I'm going to show you how to create a frame not gonna lie this one's a little bit more um, it does not have a high success rate but I'm going to try my best okay so for the next card I taped up the piece of paper in the exact same way and we're actually going to be using a piece of cardstock that is a little bit smaller to create the frame in this area. And I'm gonna tape the edges down just a little bit. Nishi, why are you upset? I'm gonna tape the edges down just so they don't move and let any glitter get underneath them. Then, I bet you're wondering how we're gonna pull this off. 
quite literally and figuratively, I'm going to take a piece of string and some heavy duty tape, not that much, and I'm going to tape the string around both sides of the tape to make a little handle mechanism on here, like so. There we go. And now we can paint around this region with the different colors. I'm going to start with the red glitz and I'm going to just do it in this corner and the opposite corner. And I like to brush away from the center piece. I can't promise that this will be perfect, but this is the technique I did for my card sample, which did work once. Next I'm going to take the orange glitz and I'm going to blend around both sides of the red. So that, okay, I'm starting to get messy here. Now I'm going to clean this and I'm going to use the gold. Always remember to close the container or elbows and other limbs might be at risk. That's how that looks, and now I'm going to try to pull this off. Hopefully I didn't get any glitter on underneath. Okay, really not bad. Yes, okay. Beautiful, there's just a little bit down here, but I might be able to like push that. Okay, so that comes from my tape being too um, strong. I can glue that down with connect glue. But other than that, that's what the frame looks like right now. So I'm going to clean it up and then I'm going to mount it on the card so you can see what it looks like. Okay, and there is the finished look. It's super shiny. The frame turned out okay. It's a little, little bit out of shape, but aren't we all? And then I just colored these little graphics in with Copic markers. So here are my two finished cards in all their glittering glory. And once again, if this doesn't work for you right away and you mess up a little bit, I had to do this several times. I'm literally looking to my right and there's a stack of these that are going to go in the trash because they're so bad. But just keep playing around with them um, and I'm sure you'll have a great time. Please be nice. You're being so nice. Just keep being nice. So that is the end of the video. Those were the finished cards. I hope you guys enjoyed them. Okay, I get it. Loud and clear. So for last week's giveaway, I'm going to put the winners right here. If you see your name, remember to submit I won the Rena K giveaway to info at GinaKDesigns.com. We will send you your products right away. And I'm going to put the question of this week's video right here. So if you want to win next week's giveaway, answer this question and you might be selected. So thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was kind of messy and unpredictable, but you know what? That should be my motto because I feel like I say the same thing before every video. But Mishi, can you get in the frame? Oh, hello. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. I know you're fed up with me.